Hello, thanks for joining me. Let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 12 together. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you and him, according to the grace of our God in the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter one, verses one through 12. How does Paul encourage the Thessalonians during their persecutions and tribulations? According to verses three and four. Let's read Romans 5, 3, 12, 12. 5, 3 says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Twelve, twelve. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Let's turn to Second Corinthians one four. Who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 6.4 But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, Seven four. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Twelve ten. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 1 Thessalonians 3, 4. For in fact, we told you before when we were with you 
that what we would suffer tribulation just as it happened, and you know. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystrum. But persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So how does Paul encourage the Thessalonians during the persecutions and tribulations according to verses 3 and 4? Paul encourages the Thessalonians during their persecutions and tribulations by reminding them of their faith, love, and patience. Also, tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Thus, we are to rejoice in our tribulations and pray continuously. God does not leave us alone in our pain and suffering. He comforts us in all our tribulations so that we can comfort others. What does Paul mean that the Lord Jesus will take vengeance on those who do not know God, according to verses 6 through 10? Let's turn to Romans 12, 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. In 14.10. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 2 Timothy 4.14 Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. So what does Paul mean that the Lord Jesus will take vengeance on those who do not know God according to verses 6 through 10? God says that vengeance is his. He will be the judge. In fact, we all shall stand before him someday. Therefore, we must do our best not to cause others to stumble in their walk with the Lord. How does God fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness through his saints, according to verses 11 through 12? Let's read Romans 14, 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. 
Colossians 1.10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. How does God fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness through his saints? According to verses 11 and 12, God can fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness through his saints by enabling them to pursue things that are peaceful, bring unity and build others up. The Holy Spirit can enable the saints to walk in the Spirit and be fruitful in every good work. May God bless you as you continue studying his word. Thank you.